good. Yep, this is fast. So let's jump right into how fast it is, because that's what you're here for, isn't it? It has 600 metrical horsepowers and 750 nms of torque, which means it'll do 0 to 62 in 3.4 seconds. And if you pay BMW £2,095 exactly to remove the limiter, it will do 190 miles per hour or as close as makes no difference. You get some driver training for that too though. That speed happens because of this, a 4.4 litre twin turbo V8 that sends its power through an eight speed automatic gearbox and to all four wheels. Making this the first M5 that isn't rear wheel drive. Uh oh. Or not, uh oh, because anticipating the righteous rage that this may cause, mostly on the internet like. BMW has given this a button. And what that button does is switches the car to rear wheel drive only. But it's only designed for track use by experienced drivers, says BMW, which is a polite way of saying. Because. Don't worry because there are two other red buttons in this car that you can press and with less dire consequences. They're on the steering wheel here. They're called M1 and M2. They're fully programmable, but the idea is that M1 is sporty and M2 is even sportier. And they work because of course the M5 comes with selectable driving modes covering stuff like the steering weight and the throttle sensitivity and the aggression of the gearbox and the dampen and that sort of thing. In fact, I think that's it. It's a transformative journey that at one end is comfortable family saloon and at the other is 600 horsepower hyper four-door mentalist. But in all of those modes, the four-wheel drive system remains intact. And far from being a hindrance to the driving experience, it acts more like a safety net. That's because it only sends power to the front when it's really needed, as in to help the car go around the corner that you've just approached too fast, which is very possible in this thing, clearly. But the further you go up the sport path, the more rear bias the drivetrain becomes and the more slip is allowed through the back wheels. So if you're so inclined and so able, you can do all the stupid slidey stuff that you want. What's so very spectacular about the M5 is that it brings a fireworks party to the day-to-day -day mundanity of your existence. As mundane as the life of someone who could afford this car could possibly be. I'll get to that in a minute. I don't want to spoil the surprise. And it is a surprise. It's tangibly more brilliant than the sum of the technology and engineering that's clearly gone into it. The balance hasn't been hampered at all by the switch to four-wheel drive. Well, not in a way that you'd really notice or care about anyway. It always feels like a big, long car especially, and the steering's a little bit lighter than you would get in a proper sports car, you know what I mean? But there's a precision and a sharpness about it that just makes the M5 feel really fluid, like lazy word, but it's true. It's just brilliant fun to drive and not in any way intimidating. It changes direction instantly and it pings forward effortlessly. There's just no sense of inertia with this car at all. Well, it is a bit intimidating. It's still quite easy to mess up in a car with this much power, mostly going to the back wheels. Yet, if you want it to be, it's as docile as a 520i. as in a bottom rung five series. You can drive this car all day long, all the while appreciating this space and the lovely cabin ambiance and the much improved iDrive system. And you can do that with four other people, if you like. That's what you have to remember for this next bit. Yeah, the price. 100 grand. Well, almost. It's easy to get there with the options list anyway. Because the starting price is that. And you know, when you're pottering around in this like it was just an ordinary 520i, that could hurt a bit. And let's face it, if you don't know what a BMW M5 is, then this could just look like any other big BMW saloon. 
If you don't know what it is, these classic M-style mirrors and the four tailpipes and the M-badges and the body kit, you'll notice those things, yeah? But it's hardly like you're driving around in a CSL Batmobile, is it? And these might be some of the most brilliant looking and comfortable chairs ever fitted to a production car. But again, in here, there's largely not that much that separates it from a well-spec 520i. A 520i that will cost less than half the price, even if you go mental with the options list. Plus, even on your most light-footed day, you're looking at 25 miles per gallon tops in an M5. And so this all begs the question, There are two ways of looking at that. There's... That is outrageous. When did the M5 stop being a 60 grand car and become a 100 grand one? Or there's... My supercar has four doors, five seats, is very comfortable, is quite discreet, and can be used to go to the tip. And even though everything in you will inhale sharply upon hearing the M5 stratospheric asking price, you really ought to be looking at this the second way. Here's why. Compare these performance stats with those of, say, an Audi R8. And it starts to paint a different picture about value. See, the M5 is supercar appropriation. Now, before you go mad in the comments, I'm not actually comparing an M5 and an R8 like you would choose one over the other. All I'm asking is why, by default, to most people it seems fair and reasonable to spend that sort of money on an R8, but not at all to spend that money on this. When this is just as quick, just as superlatively engineered and will also take you and your kids to Butlands for the weekend. And it really is practical. Boot, large, leg room, ample. And in calm mode, nice and quiet too. Decent ride quality too, albeit you're always aware that you're on 20 inch rims with rubber band tires. But because the gearbox is a torque converter type, old school like, it's lovely and smooth at low speeds, which it wouldn't be if it was a twin clutch thing. The other thing about sitting in an M5 is that everything you look at and touch is just lovely. The steering wheel is thick and spongy, and I know people complain about that, but I really like it. And it's impossible to forget that you're in something high-tech. Pretty much everything in here is a touchscreen. Even the drive selector buttons are actually a touch-sensitive panel, as is the key. Yep, this here is the most impressive key this side of the key to a city. And you might not be able to graze your cow on the town well with this key, but will the key to a city let you know whether your windows are closed and how much fuel you've got left, whether your car's unlocked? No, it won't. The digital instrument panel's so high def that it can trick you into thinking they're actual needles moving in front of you, which they're not. Well, spec two, I mean, bloody well want it to be for this money life. If you want to read them, pause now. And while you might criticize BMW for leaving some stuff on the options list that it knows you'll want, like a thousand pounds for a loud exhaust, the touchy key, that's an option as well. Does it really matter at this price? What does matter at this price is the completeness of this car. It's that whatever you ask this car to do, it does it with sheer brilliance. Comfortable one minute, track ready, mentalist the next. You're a mentalist. <laughs> well done, that BMW. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and watch some more of our stuff and leave your thoughts below. We love hearing them. Thanks. Bye.